This is, this is gold, you know, this stuff is really fertile. This is basically like buying fertilizer. I mean, it's, it's a little less potent than a high nitrogen fertilizer, but it's arguably giving you more because you're getting organic matter. A couple years in now to using a bagger mower and I hate, while I hate mowing, it's really awesome to be able to just harvest all of this beautiful organic matter for areas you do have to mow, uh, mow around trees, shrubs, some newly established gardens, things like that, where you can't just scythe it. Here's the uh, twice a week urine bucket going into our pile of organic matter fertilizer. We love to also dump this on a pile of wood chips, especially throughout all the winter. Yummy. I'm showing you guys like a pretty unimpressive veggie garden right now, but it's actually produced a lot. We got, um, you're looking at it at the kind of roughest time. This is basil that's you know, pretty much done and it's been around for many, many weeks, if not months at this point. And so I don't, you know, I'm pretty much no till. I mean, I am no till. I don't till in, in my gardens once they're established, but I'm also so even like kind of like no dig to some extent. I mean, I really don't tend to even pull roots out of the ground unless I have to. These roots can stay in the ground and rot in there. And in the spring, they really won't be in our way. And if they are, I can pull some then. I mean, I'll pull, I'll pull weeds. So there's another form of cover right there. EPDM tarps, they're awesome. I generated a whole bunch by doing some pond jobs for clients and held on to the scraps. Um, they didn't want them. So, um, yeah, they're awesome. Um, they, you leave these down depending on the time of year for two weeks to three months and you'll have perfect to plant into bed. In the high, high summer, you can vaporize stuff in two weeks here, probably faster depending on where you guys live. Um, you want this about three to six inches thick. Um, just want to cover some of these dandelions on the end. The thicker air on the side of thicker than you'd think. It's better to completely really occlude and kill the weeds on, I'd say, half your veggie garden, then kind of kill some of the weeds, but not all of them, or most of them, on your whole garden. Um, so, this mats down really good. It puts a lot of nitrogen into the garden in the spring. We rake it into the paths, plant what we're gonna plant. Depending on what it is, we'll rake it back in. If it's garlic, we'll rake it back in, but not if it's, you know, a tiny seeded vegetable. Um, so, yeah. Three ways of covering. Occlusion, well these, occlusion via tarp, dead material, occlusion being mulch that's really feeding your soil. This is a little more work than that, but it's, you're getting more for it. You're getting soil fertility. I'm composting in place. I mean, this is banking. This is investing in this future soil. I'll have to put less compost in this bed, if any, because of this. Mixing it with leaves, by the way, is awesome. A leaf mix with grass clippings is total gold. Um, just compost in place, tons of nutrients. This is oats, so it's another, another way of keeping, um, you know, the weeds down in the winter, holding the soil, feeding the soil, the root exudates. Um, of all the things, what is the most resilient? It's probably what's least best, unfortunately, for the soil biologically, which is the tarp, because once you have some of those tarps, you have them for a long, long time. I don't make my own oat seed. I buy it. That's an input. It's not terribly resilient. The grass clippings, if I was scything them, which I do sometimes too, that's very resilient. That would be max. But right now I'm mowing them with a gas mower. Not terribly resilient. This guy got forgotten about. I've got, oh, I've harvested most of my onions, as you saw in the last video. Some of them, but um, they, they are coming due at all different times. It's so weird. And it's in some ways because I had a major seed crop, seed failure. I don't know the seed. A lot of seed I bought lately has sucked. 
And so I sewed like three different times. So now everything's whacked timing wise. Um, anyway, we have had a celery going for a few of these for like most of the summer. It's good. I won't eat on camera. I've been told not to. Uh, I guess it's a little bit rude, which makes sense. Late sowing of carrots has done very, very well. I believe these are Danvers or not Scarlet Nantes. Those are pretty much the two I sow. I sew. Some of you will know just from the shape because it's very, I think they're, eh, I forget. They're a very particular shape, um, kind of classic. Um, lots of other stuff, but that's all for now. See our nursery, year one. Those are year one apples here, grafted apples. I'll have those available for clients especially. Another cover crop, buckwheat sown. That has to be sown when still pretty warm out. It's way too late to sow buckwheat here now. It's been too late for four weeks, maybe, three weeks. Here you're seeing this uh, bagger mower basically at its worst. This is late September, and it had just been raining for weeks, and I really needed to do some mowing. I wanted to get some green matter into my compost pile. I wanted to start covering the beds for the end of the season. It just wasn't stopped raining. It hadn't stopped raining, and you really want dry grass. So you're seeing, you know, I'm showing you the, the, the most disadvantageous time uh, of using this mower. I'm, I'm rarely on my hands and knees in my stomach like this cleaning out the mower, but it is real. It does happen when I can't mow when it's really dry. Sometimes it does occur, um, but uh, it's, it's the worst of it you're seeing. Um, and uh, that's the pain in the butt with this setup. So, a little intro. I have to mow some, both to kind of have successful trees. I mean, I could scythe it all, but there's a lot of space now. And uh, also, I want to make compost. See it way over there. So, um, a friend of mine recommended an electric mower. I'm glad I didn't get that. The more I learn about electric sourcing, I mean, I always knew it came with its own problems, but the more I learn about it, the more it's, I think it's just a, just parasitizing a different part of the earth. I don't know that's any, a net gain. Maybe it's no worse, but I don't think it's any better. So um, from an ecological standpoint or resilience standpoint. Um, so I went with just a pretty straight up Cub Cadet 52 inch zero turn mower. And uh, I I'm impressed. I mean, it definitely, you know, it's fossil fuel input. I've got plenty of them. Um, less every year within reason for, for the amount of outputs. But it makes, so you're seeing like once every half an hour, I kind of, well, no, actually this is the only time I did this in the last like 45 minutes, hour of mowing. It'll be the only time I do it today. I'm pretty much done. Um, really like get on my hands and knees and clean it out. But um, this is um, from it. You're getting, you know, soil tilth. You're not just burning out your organic matter by adding NPK. Um, so this has worked out really well. You want it dry when you're doing this, um, you know, but sometimes it's not dry out. It's been very wet all September after a very dry early summer. Um, but basically long, Big bigger picture, which if if you don't know, you should know that you want to cover your beds in the fall. So I've got carrots in there. I've got a nice oak cover crop here. I've got cilantro and mesclun, and I've got peas here, chard. So everything's covered. You just you want productive green matter on the ground. Peas, carrots. Um, this is an area that just became pretty weedy beans. And so I'm covering it with, you can see some gallon soga in here. Um, I mean, it did okay this year, but just kind of, I got behind on it as I do somewhere in some part of my veggie garden every year. And uh, my life goal is to not, but it happens. You can see that's an oat cover crop that was sown earlier. And it's, that's just gonna be bare soil in the spring. Well, not bare, it's gonna have a nice cover and it's gonna be ready to be raked back and gardened right into. So now it's raining. 
today was supposed to be the sunny day of the week. <laughs> it's amazing how it's shifted. Hey, I'll take it. The grass is growing, the cows are eating. It's really so cool to see how grass extends the season so far. Um, you know, the basically almost everything except for some cold loving vegetables are done. Tree crops are done. They're not banking energy anymore. Grass is still has a month to two months of just solar energy harvesting, turning into value, whether it's soil, future food, cows, fiber, milk, meat. Um, by the way, this is one of our favorite things to sow. Purple top turnip. You can buy them in bulk from Hancock or stock seed farms. Just spread them around wherever. When you're establishing sites, especially first five to 10 years, you have bare soil all over the place from different things you're doing. Sow these around with um, daikon radish and you'll just have like hundreds of pounds of kimchi, kraut making materials. Um, great soil builder. I think I mentioned to you guys before, this is the easy way to start with air prune beds. You can take it a bit further and build them up, but milk crates are free. Oh, I was just talking about that in the Verge permaculture conference I was doing. One thing I was gonna mention too, before I wrap up, it's good to outfit your mower or anything you have with the ability to have tools with you. Going back for tools is lame. So, you know, I keep a knife, vice grip, hoary in there, uh, chainsaw scrunch. Chainsaw scrunch pretty much should be almost attached to your body. Yeah. 